Welcome to Unbiased and On the Fence. I'm Shane. Thank you so much for joining. Well, as promised on this last uh, video, I told you I would get into uh, more of the material and uh, with uh, the ancient site that was discovered and the chambers and the interviews and breaking free of the matrix and the programming we have within our brain and our construct, our reality. And uh, those experiencing the Mandela effect will uh, especially appreciate this information, I believe, because many of you already um, meditate and spend time trying to center yourself and to ground yourself. And I think this is an excellent uh, tool to add to what you're already doing. I love it because it's simple. It's got some, uh, uh, you can really do it anywhere. You don't have to, so, I mean, you could do it while you're driving even. It's, it's really more of a breathing act exercise and a thought exercise. Um, so let me get right into it. This actually comes from the PDF for the interview number five, towards the end in the appendix. And there's images in there and there's a link if you wanna follow it and uh, check this out for yourself. But this is pretty much what it is. It's called a quantum pause. And this is the uh, introduction to quantum pause. Quantum pause is a primary tool of the sovereign integral process. This is part of breaking free of our programming. And uh, the wonderful thing about breath is that it is always with you from, your, from the very first to the very last experience of this world. It is portable, everyone has it, and it is what anchors you into the now. And that's uh, beautiful because like I said, you can turn off your radio, do it while you're driving, really no fear of falling asleep or anything. And they've got some cool images here too, but uh, below is a step-by-step -step process that is recommended to use when you practice quantum pause. However, it is also suggested that you remain open to adapting this process to your own style preference and capabilities and I've already got some uh, recommendations um, they do uh, recommend that you can uh, condense this over time but it's uh, they've got these heart virtues that I like to incorporate with it in a little bit different way than they have here but like I said you can uh, you can look this up I want to make this video real simple so someone can watch it and sort of incorporate it and uh, if you want a more in-depth view, you can follow the link and check it out for yourself. It's actually on page 72 of this PDF at the link, starting at page 72. But step one, declarative purpose. The first step is called declarative purpose. This simply means that before you begin, declare your intent. There are two general states when one performs quantum pause. One, I am doing this for the whole of humanity. And two, I am doing this for a specific subset of humanity, myself, friends, and family. Now, this is my first deviation. I feel like this is just another way of, uh, you know, sort of separating ourselves from everyone. And that, you know, I feel like it would be better just to stick with number one because that includes everybody. And that, to me, is breaking free of the separ separation programming that we've got. But like I say, you can follow this to, uh, to the letter if you want. But the first state is obvious, but the second varies by a considerable degree. I won't go into that because that's what I was just talking about, um, a subset of everybody. But like I said, I recommend just uh, doing it for everybody. Um, the step two is breath baseline, two to four measures. And as you see in the picture here, a measure is uh, a complete cycle basically um, and the cycle consists of uh, four equal segments you're going to breathe in you're going to pause you're going to breathe out you're going to pause so with each of these uh, four segments um, and another thing you can incorporate it doesn't mention it here is if you can uh, feel your pulse or your heart beating you can use your heart rate as sort of a, a timing so maybe you breathe in for two or three beats of your heart, you pause for the same, you breathe out for the same, and then you pause again. And that's, that last pause is always uh, difficult for me. I always wanna begin breathing in right away. 
But when you're breathing in, you simply, I don't say it out loud, of course, because you're breathing in, but in my mind, I say, I am. And then I pause and I say, we are. And then I pause. Um, in my mind as I'm breathing out. And I think this is a pretty cool image to show you what's going on with that. Okay. Now it gets into this visualization that you can incorporate. And it's basically, I think it'd be better if I show the image where you sort of imagine breathing while you're breathing in a vertical line coming up through your heart and through your pineal gland and going out into infinity. And then when you're breathing out, you imagine, I actually imagine a disc. This is showing like a ring coming out both sides, but I actually imagine a disc going out in every direction, affecting every single person, because that's when you're breathing out, you're saying we are. So I breathe in, I say I am, I pause. I imagine it coming from the center of the earth through me out into infinity. I pause and then on the out breath, I imagine a disc going out in every direction. Well, as I'm thinking, we are incorporating every single person and uh, every living thing, really everything in it. I imagine it going out and going all the way around the earth or to the edge of the disc for our flat earthers. Um, and then, um, Here's sort of another representation with the up and down, you have the I am and with the out to the sides, you have the we are. And this is uh, where it gets into um, what I like to add in to the end of it. Now y'all can do it whatever way you see fit, but I think this is kind of a cool way. If you can imagine these, uh, what do they call these? This is part of sovereign integral process, insertive behaviors. Um, so what I'll, I'll, I think is helpful is uh, if you can remember these six categories here is to breathe in and on the pause after you say I am uh, to choose one of these, like I start with appreciation. So during the pause, um, I think appreciation and then we are, and then on that last pause, I imagine appreciation again. Then I'll move to compassion. So I'll breathe in, I am. On the pause, I'll think compassion, and then breathe out, we are, and think compassion again. And then I'll move to forgiveness in the same fashion, humility, understanding, and valor. And um, at first, I was having a hard time remembering all of these so quick, but... Um, then I, I realized that this is all, you know, I, I often say Jesus is my hero. So um, these were all things he sort of did when he went to the cross. And, and you know, uh, he had appreciation, compassion, forgiveness, humility, understanding, and valor. Of course, he had valor. That's, you know, fearlessness. Um, and I think uh, for Christians, that might be an easy way to remember all this. But... Just appreciation for life, compassion for others, forgiveness for others, humility, you know, humbling yourself, understanding. Um, and this really helps with other people too, because sometimes we get aggravated with other people and you got to just understand that, you know, uh, like Jesus said, forgive them for they know not what they do. A lot is within that, you know, that was just in that statement, you've got compassion, forgiveness and understanding. Um, because it is, I mean, it's tough to deal with other people. We're, we're here on this, in this, uh, on this planet and, uh, with other people and we've got to do this all the time and appreciation for life and, uh, other people and appreciation for love. These all sort of tie in with love. Um, so I think these are good ways to, uh, um, you know, keep you focused on what's important. Uh, but like I said, you guys can uh, go about this the way you want. You can look this up. It's all in that PDF, um, which is linked. And I think this is an excellent way. It's really quick and easy. You can really do this uh, just in six breaths. Um, and I'll typically top it off with a seventh one um, and just say love, which kind of 
combines all this together. So I don't know. I don't like stopping at six. I like seven better. So I sort of incorporate it love, which I think kind of encompasses all of these at the same time. But it's quick and easy. And you can add it to, you know, whatever you already do in meditation. And um, I do want to set up some times again this weekend for all of us to have a, a group meditation. And I thought maybe we can incorporate this along with whatever you normally do. Um, since it, you can really do it in like a minute, you know, it doesn't take long at all. Um, you know, and I actually, I was doing, going through it and repeating it. At first, I was having a hard time remembering all of them. So I uh, was repeating it because I couldn't think and I had to breathe and I couldn't remember what I forgot. So I just do appreciation or forgiveness or compassion again or something like that. But it's an excellent way to uh, stay grounded throughout the day. And uh, you can, if you work at a desk or if you, you know, really there's just about, unless you're up talking to people or on the phone, you could do it between phone calls. I really like it because if it's helping break the programming that we've got and it's easy enough that we can do it a lot, then um, we can start to break free of this matrix and uh, start to unite as one in love and compassion. So with that, I'm going to leave you guys and let me know in the comments uh, what you think of it and uh, check out the PDF when you get time and uh, you can incorporate their whole process with visualization and everything. But uh, with that, I will see you on the next one. Have a good one.